Welcome to the Commonwealth Club World Affairs of California. I'm Michelle Miao, a member of the Board of Governors and also producer and host of the Michelle Miao Show here. Your A through Z covering the LGBT, LMNOP, and everyone in between. You're probably wondering why there's an empty seat right next to me. Well, I have good reason and, I mean, really good reason. We have an exciting guest Before I tell you who it is, let me give you some information about what this special piece is about. Back in 2021, I was given the opportunity and privilege to visit Thailand. During that year, it was the very first year that a group of young LGBTQ activists brought Bangkok pride out of political hiatus after 16 years. So of course, I was inspired I admired their courage and their tenacity, even if they were putting their lives on the line. Well, now fast forward to 2023. Thailand is looking at passing marriage equality in just a week or so here. Thailand's parliament will vote on marriage equality. It will be their second time to vote on it. And a new prime minister is very confident he has the votes. APEC visited San Francisco just last month, and yes, It was incredible. There was a lot of energy. There was a lot of buzz. And we here at the Commonwealth Club, we held the multi-stakeholders forum. At the same time, there were a lot of security challenges and traffic and protests. You probably heard those in the news. And so that was a big challenge. We had planned on having Prime Minister Seta Tavisan of Thailand here with us at the Commonwealth Club, but he wasn't able to make it. And so we met him at the Ritz-Carlton. So let's get to this mini conversation we had about LGBTQIA plus rights with the prime minister. Prime Minister Seta, welcome to San Francisco. It is so special that we are doing this interview here in San Francisco, where we have made history for LGBTQIA plus rights as home to one of the first out openly elected LGBTQ political officials who have made great way for queer people. Um, you yourself ha- has publicly come out for three policies on LGBTQIA plus rights in Thailand that you wish to make an impact. Let's talk about those three things, marriage equality, gender rights, and also decriminalization of sex work. Yeah, there are many uh, subcategories to those as well, not just, not just those uh, three main rights. Let's, let's talk about the most important thing first, the equal marriage rights, which uh, my government will table to the Parliament, first week of uh, December, which is going to be the first bill that we table to the Parliament in December, when the Parliament opens. Do you feel strongly that we may have more support than opposition in comparison to the prior effort? We have the majority in the Parliament. So if it doesn't go through, I take it personally. That's a message. That's a message we can definitely get behind. Uh, talk to us about gender rights very quick, because actually, of all people you would know, you started your businesses and you actually have policies within your businesses that focus on gender rights. This will make a huge impact for the transgender community in Thailand. And so if you can just say a little bit about the importance of why you're working on gender rights, a gender rights bill. To me, it's, it's very natural and common that people should have the right to choose who they want to be. I mean, that's, that's, I think it's a basic right. Okay, it doesn't indicate at all any which way or form that you are a good or a bad person. Okay, it's just the right that you should have. I mean, I, it's natural to me, but I, I, I don't see any reason why people complicate things on this. The Bangkok Pride team, it's a very young team. Uh, are you just, excited, surprised by how much uh, of a movement they have become. They are very eager and aspirational to bid for World Pride Bangkok 2028, which would mean that Bangkok or Thailand would be the first Asian country to do so if they win the bid. If they win the bid. I Actually, it's, I, I started my political campaign in uh, Sayam Paragon meeting with all the LGBT people. And one of the things that they put forward was uh, the World Pride 20, uh, 28, which I, where I went during the campaign, this has been one of the policy that I talk about 
together with uh, our government policy to make Thailand a world destination for festivals, not just LGBTQ+, but all kinds of music, art, wine, hopefully antique cars in the future. That has been our, our main policies. And wherever I go, it, 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 it was met with great enthusiasm. The private sector, the uh, tourism authority of Thailand, uh, of course, shopping malls. I mean, all those people are really looking forward to, to joining hand in, in being very active in bidding for the 2028 World Pride. Last question for you. It's 2028 and Bangkok has, has won the bid to host World Pride. What is your vision? What are you seeing? I wish to see that all people from all corners of the world, whether regarding of their sexual orientation, do come out in a big way to celebrate, whether it's from a parade, parties, joint hand in all kinds of activities. That's what, that, that's what I like to see. Thank you so much, sir. And thank you for your support of the LGBTQIA plus community around the world, really. Thank you. That all sounds really promising. We thank the Prime Minister of Thailand, Prime Minister Seta Tavisin, and really his entire team for making it happen to sit down with us to talk about LGBTQIA plus rights. I have to tell you, it was not easy, and it's not every day that even myself would think that someone of his position and power would sit down with me to talk about LGBTQIA plus rights specifically. And so we appreciate that. I personally appreciate the opportunity to do so. In Thailand, it might be known as a travel destination that is incredibly inclusive to the LGBTQIA plus community. It also is a country that is very socially tolerant of the community, but the laws don't say so. And we spoke about that just a few minutes ago. The three critical laws that the prime minister is working on is what's on the table. And so we hope they all pass. Therefore, all LGBTQIA plus people in the country of Thailand can move forward with their fight for human rights. The significance of World Pride coming to a country like Thailand will showcase to the world that all things are possible. Remember I mentioned that the young Bangkok Pride team did take their pride out of political hiatus, putting their young lives on the line, fighting for democracy and also this opportunity to express their right to a voice and also their right to express themselves. And so hopefully this becomes just another example of another example of another example of our fight for human rights.
While we wait for Thailand's parliament to make a decision on LGBTQIA plus rights in Thailand, we're equally excited about the thought of bringing World Pride to Bangkok and or Thailand because it would be the first time that an Asian country is able to do so. Well, what would that mean for the region of Asia? Asia being the largest population ever and probably home to a very large population of LGBTQIA plus people, it means that we'd be one step closer to equal rights for all around the world. Thanks again to the Prime Minister of Thailand, Prime Minister Seta Thavisin and his entire team. Thank you to the Young Bangkok Pride organizers and all of the LGBTQIA plus advocates and activists in Asia who are working hard every day to make it a better place for all people in the region and or around the world. That is the focus of our work is globally connecting one another. This was a very important piece to me personally, just because I also got the opportunity to experience firsthand of what you can do once you speak up in making change happen. Thanks for joining me, Michelle Miao at the Commonwealth Club World Affairs of California. For all future programs and events, head to commonwealthclub.org slash MMS.